Here are the six things that you should definitely pay attention to when you're searching a deal on MLS. And make sure you watch until the end because one of them might actually make your next deal a trophy deal. Number one is day on market. If the day on market is only one or two days, it is really important for you to actually get in front of the seller, the agents as quickly as possible because you don't actually know their intention or their motivation with when they need to actually sell the property. If you came across with a seller who really need the property gone within the next 30 to 60 days, you might get pretty lucky and be able to put in an offer without any competition. Another thing I will be looking for is the day on market that's over 60 days. Those listings we actually call that as a stagnant listings. And the reason why you might get lucky is because the seller probably has a lot of interest in the very beginning and they gone through multiple different offers that end up falling through or you might have a seller who's just very stubborn with the price and they eventually run out of time which means now the time of them having to sell that property becomes much shorter which might be an angle where you can kind of take to help them close the property still within the timelines and one of the example of this is actually my parents neighbor who's trying to actually list their property for the price that was back in 2022 they were not able to actually adjust their expectation and they had to wait for additional three four months reduce the price relist it multiple different times and eventually they end up selling for under one million dollars when their listing initially was listed for 1.3 and that was a huge discount simply because now they had to actually make a move and someone actually came and script the deal. Now, second things that I might look for is a listing with poor photos or no photo. Now, there's a difference here. No photos usually means that the condition is already bad. Most of the intention will be coming from the investor, just like you and I. It is always good to reach out to the listing agent, try to gather some information, book a showing immediately so that you can understand the condition of the property and try to understand the motivation of the seller before you make an offer. Now, the second thing that I might look for is a listing with a poor photos. Usually, that means two things. Number one is that the marketing is not on point. The agent didn't really do their job, which means there's not going to be as much attention coming from the end user so you're going to get a lot of investors looking at this property which means everybody's haggling which means the price is going to be slightly lower another advantage here is that we already know that the agent is not very professional so you can actually call them have a conversation see how sloppy they are they might end up telling us how quickly the seller actually need to sell the property and this is where we can come in and try to negotiate a really good deal with a seller number three is out of town agents what i really mean is that if you have a person an agent who's listing the property 45 minutes or even like an hour away where they have a different board usually what that means is that the agent actually doesn't have the full data locally and what that will do to the listing is that they might actually price it incorrectly or they might evaluate the incorrect price point for the seller. If you enjoyed the video so far, like, subscribe, and don't forget to join our Facebook group for a private session like this. Number four is a wrong property type for the listing. We have seen so many different mistakes from the agents that they end up putting the multifamily buildings into a single family category. And what that does is that this will show up to an end user who are not necessarily going to be the buyer of the building. People who are looking for multifamily buildings, they're not gonna be alerted because this listing doesn't actually fall into their searching criteria, which means your competition is extremely low. The fifth one is a wrong board. This happens more than we think. A lot of agents, because the, when they post it, it will show up on Realtor.ca, Realtor.com, on Zillow's. So they just feel like the job is done. But here's the thing. A lot of buyers, they're only relying on the search criteria coming from the actual local board. So even though that specific listing is on MLS, they don't actually get that information from their agents. And this is where the listing is not going to get a full exposure from the market. And you can definitely take the advantage of that. The last one is a unique property and what I really mean is a property that's non-conforming or a property that's not severed or it could be a property that's only L-shaped because these properties are not going to draw the interest from the single family buyers and for a lot of investors they just don't want the hassle they feel like they probably have to go through some rezoning some sort of value add approach and for average investor they're also probably not going to be interested in this type of properties because they just want to keep the investing as passive as possible. So this is where you can kind of come in solve the problem make it conventional and then you can sell that back to the end user and that's how you can find a good deal of MLS in today's market.